Hello. Um, hello. Uh, news, news to kick us off that is relevant Ooh. to me and not really to you is Ooh. that the Texas Book Festival, which is coming jealous. up in November. What? I said jealous. Oh. <laughs> What did you think I said? I couldn't tell. It just sounded like you were hissing at me, like you were trying to speak parcel tongue or something. I apologize for the Harry Potter reference. Trigger I apologize word. that I know the I parcel know. tongue um, in the movie. As you should. Anyway, they announced their author lineup, and it's it's not romance. It's it's all, all books. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. last year, there were only a couple of people I was really interested in seeing, but this year, um, Allie Hazelwood, Kennedy Ryan, mm-hmm. Sajni Patel... Maisie Eddings. I feel like I might have missed people, but it's a very large list, so I was just pulling the ones that I recognized. Um, Alexandra Bracken, which she she wrote Lore, and she's written some other oh. YA stuff. But that's the only one I've read. Um, and when I was thick in my YA fantasy, I really liked that book. Um, so that's what, Stacey Abrams, who I mean, I've never. That's cool. I've read her. I read one of her books from Berkeley that was like re-released. Interesting. And I didn't I'm realize not, it was re-released. But... It was an interesting time. I know she, has, she her most recent one has a really cool cover. I've been eyeing it. Um I, so I'm jealous. in Texas. It'll be fun. It was a uh, it's free. It's just like a big Mhm. They close off downtown Austin in front of the Capitol and have like tents and signings and panels and things. So I enjoyed when I went last year. Um, again, not romance heavy, but they had a panel. Yeah. And also, I don't know if you have this issue, but my steamy lit stuff goes to my junk mail. I don't know oh, why. No. So if anyone hasn't, like if you went to steamy lit and you didn't get an email, check your junk mail. Cause they, it was like information about um, early bird tickets for people yeah. who already went. Oh, uh, so I was like looking at my junk. I was like, oh, well, that's important. So, I, and I like have added it to my VIP contacts, but that's weird. Alas, I know. So, just in case anyone's in that boat, and it's only tickets for 2024, which is nice. I thought they were going to make us buy like 2024 and 2025 at the same time. I was like, I'd prefer not to. <laughs> so, we're safe there. We are safe. Mm hmm. I think that was my only news. Welcome to Romancer TBR. It's us. <laughs> it's us. This is going to be a vibes only episode. <laughs> Boy, that we it. came up with at the end of recording our last episode. Once again, purely out of the vibe. And we we took 20 minutes of that episode to just like talk about it. And then I had to like cut it out. Yeah. And so like... You don't know this, but we know this, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's recorded somewhere. I feel I should give context because yeah, you, you need make... to. Yeah. You need so, to start us off. This is related to Formula One, which if you have listened, I'm sure I have talked about it before. However, I promise this episode isn't about Formula One. It was just the starting point. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a, like, the most successful female race car driver is named Danica Patrick. Danica Patrick is not the most supportive of women in motorsports, which is hilarious. Because, girl, what are you doing? Like, what? Um, She is not. Sometimes I have seen points she has made that are valid. However, sometimes it's like, why do you hate other women? You know? Mm-hmm. It'd be like that sometimes. Anyway, she, in some interview, which, like, there isn't a video of it. Um, because it was like a Sky Sports thing, or maybe there is a video, but only if you are subscribed to the Sky Sports, whatever. The point is, mm-hmm. she did an interview. And it, it went, not super viral, but it was it, it was news in, in the motorsport community. Um, because she said, um, they, they asked about, um, it was a, a young girl, by the way, that was doing the interview. It was like a child interview. <laughs> um, and she asked uh, when we would see a woman, uh, a woman, a woman racing in Formula One. And so she started out reasonably. As I've always said, my whole career, it takes 100 guys to come through to find a good one. And then it takes 100 girls. That takes a long time to, f- to find a good one, right? It's just the odds are not in favor of there always being one or being many of them. Fair enough. There's just not as many women 
So, of course, it's going to take longer. Then she continues. And at the end of the day, I think that the nature of this sport is masculine. It's aggressive. You have to, you know, handle the car. Not only just the car, because that's a skill, but the mindset that it takes to be really good is something that's not normal in a feminine mind, in a female mind. You have to be like, for me, I know if somebody tries to bow up or make it uh, or make it difficult on me, I would go into like an aggressive kill mode, right? You just want to go after them. And that's just not a natural feminine thought. I say that because I've asked my friends about it and they're like, yeah, that's not how I think. <laughs> and so there's a, I can't remember which Formula One podcast it is. It's like, the, is it it's two the, girls, one yeah. Formula? I was like looking at our transcript from last time. Okay. Yeah. Two girls, one formula has merch that looks like the Barbie movie. It's so cute. <laughs> and it has aggressive kill mode on it. And I was like, that's hilarious. I love aggressive kill mode. I don't even remember how we got from one to the other, but we started talking about books where characters, usually heroines, I feel like, because that's a mm-hmm. feminine coded thing in the context of the quote, but it doesn't have to be a woman. Go into there, aggressive kill mode. There are, there are mode. a few men. Yeah. There are a few men. I think yeah. it's funnier when it's a woman, but yeah. sometimes yeah. They, be go- they, 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 they be going into aggressive kill mode. And thus the idea for this episode was born, which is literally just us spitballing books in which characters go into aggressive kill mode yeah. and we love it. It it was a great episode at the end of that episode. <laughs> so it was great. Dare, dare, dare I say so myself? <laughs> yeah, at that point it was like two plus hours and I was like, eee. Bye-bye. I just think it's so bold to say that women can't go into aggressive kill mode. Uh like we're here to prove that wrong. Have you never seen women, like, ripping each other's hair out and stuff? What was that? I mean, not me, but. <laughs> oh, my God. Did, have you seen that video? Um, I think it was at the Morgan Wallen concert. Um, it was, like, going viral on Twitter. This it, They were at the porta-potties. Oh, yeah. I never watched yeah. the video, but I saw it. Oh, my God. They were it. at the porta-potties. And I think this one, like – girl probably like our age like goes into the bathroom and her mom is like guarding the door or something i think she like cut in line she didn't i don't i don't know um and then one lady was like getting aggressive towards the mother and then they like dragged her into the open porta potty and so she was like getting her ass like beat in the porta potty the daughter comes out of her porta potty she is in this like blue romper and cowboy boots and she goes into aggressive kill mode like that is the pinnacle to me of like real life aggressive kill mode like she the way she pulled the hair like she like <laughs> ripped two girls out of that porta potty like she was a fucking hulk like it was crazy and like the one girl had, was trying to help the mom the daughter didn't know she just like threw on the ground it was it it's a wild video and you know i just have to <laughs> i don't know <laughs> the porta potty of it all it really <laughs> It did a number on me. It was like 3 a.m. and I was watching and I was like, oh, I was not prepared. So I do recommend watching the video to really get in the spirit. We'll of, link it. Yeah, of this episode. Yeah, I think that's correct. I yeah, think like that's the vibe we're going for. Yeah, like there are like a few books where even if it's not like killing or I mean, there's not a lot of killing, killing, yeah. unfortunately, but um where they just like can feel their emotions <laughs> like unreserved just feeling them i think that's a beautiful thing and i've read about it a few times and i love it every time i'm just like yes roll on the ground kick and scream do it for me <laughs> do it for me <sighs> um i love being a woman i love being a woman <laughs> the inherent feminine rage mm-hmm. the olivia rodrigo of it all if you will. oh yes uh are we limiting historical romance or are we going all romance here what's the honestly here here's the issue i can't go an episode without talking about kiss of a demon king so like i'm pro like i only have a few like few in my mind that would be contemporary or elsewhere but i think i'm fine with that fine with what doing all of them oh okay like if you have like something specific no i don't i okay well kiss of a demon king (laughs) <laughs> I mean, that, I feel like. Listen, I've only read again up the first yeah, few Cressley Cole most in of that them. series, but uh, yeah, I feel like any Cressley but, Cole but is going to have an aggressive kill mode in it. 
she has her own brand of aggressive kill mode. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of like Elizabeth Hoyt. I feel like mm. all of those books are just aggressive kill mode, like in the in and of themselves. Like I Elizabeth Hoyt herself is just she, in yes. aggressive kill mode. Exactly. Like maybe the books, maybe not so much, but her as a writer writing them, <laughs> she was in aggressive kill mode. And it and that's the definition. <laughs> <laughs> like there's your definition kiss of mm-hmm. a demon king and elizabeth hoyt the author and just... also that girl in a romper <laughs> fighting in the porta potty yes these are all of our that's the um that's the mood board <laughs> for aggressive kill mode um yeah they're just so prominent in my mind so you know I mean, that's that's so fair um, I literally am just going to open I did no prep for this we're going to mm-hmm. open Goodreads and we're going to start scrolling on the red shelf yeah. and see what speaks to me because first and foremost I read Any Duke in a Storm by Amelie Howard mm, and boy so was that woman in kill mode <laughs> aggressive kill mode for like most of the book if I'm being honest but there's a part where she like they're making out. Oh, this book comes out, by the way, in like January. So it's going to be mm. a minute. However, she is undercover as a spy, or rather, mm-hmm. a spy undercover as Bonnie Bess, the feared <laughs> pirate captain. Oh my God, it's pirate. Kind yeah. <gasps> well, she claims that she's a smuggler, not a pirate. Well, don't they all? Yeah. It's giving Story Nikolai of lands off. It's giving it's, yeah. privateer. Um, <laughs> it's giving privateer. <laughs> Uh, and he's also like kind of a pirate is a whole thing anyway they're making out in an alleyway and they get ganged up on by like eight dudes or something and so they start fighting these guys off but also like turning each other on at the same time as they are physically fighting these guys she she like drags a knife across him and he's like that's hot and i was like okay Sure. Now is not really the time you're getting ganged up on by a bunch of dudes who are trying to kill you, but I respect it. Um, she's just in aggressive kill mode for so much of that. She's blowing things up. <sighs> she's She stabbed a guy in the balls. Yes. I'm so excited. Mm. That That's it. That's my first contribution to this. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, I just read one, too. It was One Dangerous Night by Kathy Maxwell. Um, and this is one of the ones where she just, like, felt her emotions for the first time, like, just, like, let them loose. Like, do you know that Tangle meme where she's, like, laying in the yes. in the field and he's just sitting there? That was the dynamic. Like, she was just going through it. Like, they were on a road trip. Like, she was trying to escape to Ireland because her sister married the guy that she thought she was in love with. She was just having a bunch of things. And I'm like, you are so relatable. Like, I, too. Yeah, because, like, I then I, like, in the middle of that one, I went back to read book one um, because I had it on the audiobook. And I was, like, making bracelets, so I need something to listen to. And I wasn't a fan of her really in that book. But because I knew her in the book two, I was more of a fan than I would have been. And so, like, you could see her get to the point where she got in book two and then I was just rooting for her so hard to just like let it all out and the way she just like there was a scene she got like stuck in like tree branches and he like offered to help her and she's like no I'm gonna do it myself I'm Miss Independent she just like flails bodily for like five minutes just like kicking and screaming he's just watching it and she's just like (laughs) absolutely like little nutty squirrel energy like she's just kicking and screaming and finally like gets out and she just like dusts herself off and just like keeps on walking like the emotions that she was able to feel in that book I felt very seen because like I just feel like I'd have reacted that way too even if the sister and the her new husband were a great match, I'd still feel like, wow, I would have been better. So it was great. It was a really good book. Also, they were just like aggressively kill mode towards each other. It was kind of, there was a lot of banter and they were not getting along. I mean, they were in bad circumstances. They were the only two survivors of a carriage wreck. They didn't know each other, (laughs) both disguising their identities. It was a whole thing. So that one comes out... 
I hope it's not in 2024, but I have a feeling it is. Oops. Let's see. I mean, oh the one I reckon. It, the I know. I know. I'm just like January. hoping for their sake. Sure. It's not. Sure. Let's see. It is. Oh, March 2024. Oh, so. Sorry. Just have it on your have it on your uh, tab. That's fine. My next one is an old school. It's out. Oh, yeah. It's been out. It's out. It's Gentle Rogue, so I'm not going to talk too much about Did it. Did you because, read it? Oh, yeah, because we have an episode coming up in which yeah. I will discuss it at length. First of all, banger. Second of all, he is in aggressive kill mode for like the second half of that book, but not in the way that you expect. Mm-hmm. Like... It's at her half the time, but not in a scary way. Like he, I like that. There's a joke where he, like, yeah, he's mad at her, and he's like, "Well, I'm gonna go beat my wife," and everybody is like, "What? You can't do that!" And he's like, "I cannot believe y'all believe. I would never do that. Like, that was a bit. I'm not gonna go beat my wife. Why would I do anyway?" Um, it, he's just so incapable of expressing any emotions, and also, he like aggressively fights all five of her brothers and gets forced to marry her but kind of on purpose nice and he hates her brothers so much (laughs) and they kidnap her away from him after they're already married and he shows up at the end of this book and there's like a line of sailors like preventing him from getting to her and she meanwhile is like my brother i would like to go back to my husband please this is not going well can I just and he's like no and also you can't get to him because there's a line of sailors on this boat preventing him from getting to us and she has a conversation with her brother and he's like fighting them in the background Mm -hmm. but there's like a whole bunch of sailors like he's busy and then all of a sudden she turns around and he's there (laughs) and she's like how much of that conversation did you hear and how did you get here and there's like moaning men (laughs) like he just fought all of them (laughs) <laughs> this book, it's giving cinema it's giving cinematography um <laughs> i am drunk taylor it i'm I, so excited cool i don't know well, why this book was so funny uh that's a good because it doesn't there's no audiobook right there is but uh i loved it every is. part of the audiobook except the narrator does an atrocious voice for him it's maybe very I like will. Meh, meh, meh. oh no uh oh, you I would hate it. it so much I thought yeah. it was, like, once I kind of got past that, yeah. I thought she did a really... And, like, actually, she was very funny on the mm-hmm. heroine and on the brothers. God damn it. Um, so that was yeah. enjoyable, but I do think you would find her hero voice atrocious. Yeah. Maybe I'll just nestle in, read my... Well, it made me copy. chuckle. She also was in aggressive kill mode at him for a lot of the book. But also, every time he made out with her, she was like, you know what? Take me. <laughs> and I respect that. I'm excited. I like that's obviously like a very classic cover, but I haven't heard people talk about it much. No, I, it's so. not what I was. It's interesting because I was expecting a bodice ripper. It's not. Oh, cool. Well, it's all pretty consensual. Color me excited, and also not a lot of violence. It's mostly like family nonsense and her pretending to be a cabin boy and him pretending not to know who she is, and then him fighting her brothers, all five of them, and then them forcing him to marry her and then locking him in a cellar to await trial for being a retired pirate (laughs) why is it so funny this book was so funny there is literally i wrote it down because the funniest thing i have ever heard is um her calling him a pirate and him responding that's gentleman pirate love and retired not that it matters it's giving india holton that really (laughs) is Mm. it was so funny Mm. why was it so funny i can't i can't Mm. well that's a great advertisement with her going to find her fiance who disappeared six years ago and finding him so nice there you go well there's our there's our ad for romance or tbr next week (laughs) the 19th tuesday um and you should know listeners what very special holiday we will be celebrating i don't think i cut that out i, I think i left not. that in i think i left. well that if in you the... did google's free but also they should know <laughs> i think i left it in because i was like we they need to know no you should know what is special day it is and it's not her birthday if that's it's not my birthday no this is far more important you couldn't birthday. google that 
<laughs> Maybe. I don't I'll, think I'll, 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 do I'll start a Wikipedia page on you. Aww. <laughs> Guys, where is our Romance Your TBR Wikipedia page? That's so true. I want people to write wildly and accurate things. I also like I'm like worth that. like 1.5 million. Like, <laughs> <laughs> build me up. Um, <sighs> you said something that triggered another book in me. Uh, you said triggered you said, another book in me. <laughs> you said locked, and when I heard the word locked, I was like, "Who locked someone in something?" And that brought me to <laughs> seduce me at sunrise. Wow, when she just yeah. locks that man in a fucking like closet cabinet thing and is like what if i set it on fire and then does (laughs) it's basically like does and like you will stay in there until you tell me what i need to know and then she also just like didn't want to let him out (laughs) like again that book the more i think about it the more i love it because it wasn't my favorite but the vibes of her just shoving that weird ass doctor (laughs) Into like a what what would you even call that? It wasn't it was like a, a wardrobe. A wardrobe, yeah. Into a wardrobe and just setting it on fire. And he's so cocky. He doesn't think she's gonna do it. And then well, she just she, Wynn she is not a character mm. who you ever expect to, no. to even have the capacity for aggressive kill mode. No. And that just shows the feminine mind is not limited yes. by this nonsense. Yes. She has two wolves inside her. <laughs> One is much smaller. <laughs> Or maybe not smaller, but calmer. But and when you is- incite that wolf. <laughs> Absolutely feral. I just, because he poisons, what's his name? Like, look, I don't even remember his name. Like Kev? Kev. Or, uh, was it Kev or was it Cam? I don't remember Kev. the plot of that. Kev- oh, wait, Cam at- was accidentally poisoned, right? Right. I wasn't it wasn't supposed to be Kev? It was supposed to be Kev, I think. It's all coming back I'm to not me. Yeah, I think hey, you're right. It's been a hot minute. I think you're right because every like Cam was like trying to have sex, I think, and he just like fell down or something. Gross. I don't know. Spoilers for <laughs> major spoiler. He didn't finish, guys. <laughs> That's the spoiler. <laughs> You'll get what through it, okay? Um, yeah, I just what a what a banger of uh, an aggressive kill mode. If I do say so myself, <laughs> just. Uh, shoves him like it's just my favorite thing is like just unhinged like you're not actually gonna commit this act of violence are you and then they just do it like in the gentleman's guide no that's the other one the nobleman's guide to something or something blue countryman secret lives of country gentlemen wow i am wow. it took you a minute but you got it, <laughs> it took me so i many. was like vice and virtue no no there there are just too many guides to blank and blank yeah (laughs) guides to blank and blank uh so a nobleman no my god the secret lives of country gentlemen (laughs) i can do it uh when uh it's not joss it's the other one i knew it at some point in my life uh whatever he's like getting his ass whooped a little bit and then someone comes in and rescues him, and they're like, do you want me to shoot this guy who's, like, being really annoying? And you expect him- Do you him- want me to kill that guy <laughs> for you? <laughs> exactly. And you expect him to say, no, you can't do that. That's bad. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> he's just like, yeah, do it. And it, it shakes out a little bit differently, but it's great. And then it also happens in um, Prisoner of Love by Beverly Jenkins. It's a novella. Um, She had this, like, horrible ex-husband who was just a dick. And he comes back and um, the hero is like, do you want me to just like take him outside and show him who's boss? And she's like, yeah, (laughs) yeah, I do. Like, I just love no remorse. Just uh, agree. (laughs) Like, you know, so good. So that's my favorite genre. I mean, counterpoint to that. Mm. Never cross a Highlander. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. everyone's in aggressive kill mode in that book, that first book of all. So it's good. just nothing but aggressive kill mode at all times. Second of all, we have a, a classic show mercy, even when he doesn't want to show mercy, but she mm-hmm. asked him to, only for that guy to cause yes. more problems. And so Ruckus. he has to be dealt with. Mm. And he was, I don't, I mean, he was dealt, everybody, everybody yeah. was dealt with. Um, 
Yeah, no, everybody was dealt with. There were knives thrown. You know. Many swords. So many swords. That book was so good. The storytelling. I was just like sitting staring at my wall. I was supposed to be cleaning and it wasn't happening. I was just so caught up. It it was And then she got her little aggressive kill mob moment. Because like my one that was the the knife. Yeah. She she also got it. Yeah, because my one criticism for most of the book was that she was saved a lot. And then I didn't for some I didn't think it was gonna happen and then it happened. I was like, fuck yeah. So then the criticism was not criticism anymore. Cause she got to she got to attack. And I liked it. So hell yeah. Cool. What else? Well, we know an island princess starts a scandal. Well, we know that's one. Yeah. We can't. Aggressive kill mode. Mm. And hopefully, listeners, you've read it by now. Like, what more can we do to tell you to read this? Truly. But if you're not aware, there is that scene at the wedding. She has her speak now. She has her aggressive kill mode now moment and she just attacks that man jumps on his back rips his hair out at the wedding and it's beautiful it really is beautiful she really did unlock her inner aggressive kill mm-hmm. mode on that one yeah and then she just felt other emotions like after that she was just like a mess oh delicious great times were had just by your your hosts there's another hosts slay there's there's another scottish romance i read and i can't remember i mean she's in aggressive kill mode for a lot of this book it's Mm -hmm. uh never never love a highlander by Uh, maya banks i think i read that just never cross i think i read that one um I'm trying to remember. Wait, is that the one where I said fuck it five stars because she had a knife or she like killed someone? Uh, no, I'm not seeing your review. There, well, then there's another one that I have. Is it purple? No. Oh. That's, let me see. Well, disregard that. I'll find the one that I'm thinking of. Um, no, it's, it's red. It's like dark red. 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 Um, never love a Highlander. I did not read the first two books in the series. Probably should have, but I didn't. Um. But but it's she apparently has been she, she's like the daughter of the the head of a clan and she was supposed to marry the hero from book one and then didn't and then was supposed to marry the hero from book two and then he didn't so now she's finally marrying this guy to like create mm-hmm. an alliance but she doesn't really want to I think because she's attracted to him and it scares her classic um but she's like a warrior herself. Like, she spent a lot of time training, but when she's married, he doesn't want her to do that anymore, especially when she gets pregnant. It's a whole thing. And she's mm-hmm. mad about it, and they fight a lot, but they also bang a lot, so it's a whole thing. And I don't remember all of the details, but I think he, like, gets taken prisoner or something and she like leads their army to rescue him i'm unclear on all the details except i know she does indeed go into pregnant woman aggressive mode which is a whole thing i don't know if she's pregnant at that point or if it's earlier when she goes into pregnant woman aggressive mode but it's there that really Um, is its own thing because i I can't remember any of the books but i feel like there are a few books where it's normally not like the main book it's like the book with the couple like after like they're featured in it and then you'll have the woman be pregnant and then she's just there's one where the guy is like scared (laughs) it was really good but i don't remember i don't know not i not i what was this book was that really last year Oh, no. Well, I'm looking at this one now. Um, A Kiss to Remember by Teresa Medeiros. Neither really main character was in aggressive kill mode, but she has younger siblings, and they were aggressively trying to murder him the entire book because um, she, like, was... He has amnesia. She's pretending that he's her uh, fiancé. Um, and the siblings are, like, scared that she's gonna either, like, lose herself or, like, she doesn't want to marry him or whatever, and they're just, like, scared for her. So it's it's coming from a place of, like, good, but the, 
the younger brother, he kind of like wises up a little bit earlier than the younger sister because she like there were various murder attempts. <laughs> she pushed a gargoyle off of a church, like a big stone gargoyle. Like he barely got saved. She poisoned him. Right. Like and so this guy has no clue why any of this is happening. He his memory is gone. He's kind of just there to be sexy and to like help around the house. <laughs> My dream. <laughs> yeah. And, he, like, he's just thinking about, like, wanting to bang her. He's like, how can, like, how did we not do this? Like, what, who was I in this past life? Like, that doesn't seem right. And then he's also just, a, like, murder attempts are happening. So, and it was, like, those those kids. Those meddling kids. Yeah, I love you meddling kids. Speaking of, oh, what's this book? Oh. Side characters who go into aggressive kill mode. Yes. Um, I would like to submit... Basically, every Beverly Jenkins oh, where yeah. the main characters aren't the ones who deal with the villain, which is many. For example, yes. um, To Catch a Raven? Nah. There's just, like, a hint at marital, like, the wife doesn't like the husband. And then at the very end, there's, like, a casual line thrown in about how she was arrested for, like, axe murdering him. <laughs> I forgot about that. And, like, I feel a little bit bad for spoiling it, except that it's literally just, like, a casual, like, oh, yeah, also that happened. It's like, been out for, like, two years at this point. I forgot about that. Because <laughs> you you don't really like her. You didn't no, like she, him. They're they're bad and they're racist and they're so slimy. That was the best nugget. Yeah, it just she axe murders him. There are just so many, or, like... God, that was a The good. villains are just... Somebody ends up in aggressive kill mode. I talk all the time yeah. about which one is it? I think it's Rebel where they mm-hmm. they take him out and tie him up and put him in a boat and are like, it's sinking. There's a knife in there if you can find it before the gators get you. And he doesn't. He doesn't. The gators get him. What did Beverly Jenkins just tweeted the other day? What did she tweet? Because it was Beverly about Jenkins that. is also, I feel like, in aggressive kill mode. All yeah. The time. What did she? I retweeted her, but I don't remember. Oh. Um, out of context, Miss Bev Yale con quote. Uh, this is from her. Up to my titties and alligators. <laughs> so to be in a room of Miss Bev saying that, I would have also sold my titties to be to be in that room. I mean, yeah. I just love that vibe. So she she's forever the icon. She's forever the moment. You know who else is always in aggressive kill mode, at least now? Not so much the earlier books, but the later ones. Sarah McLean. Yeah. Aggressive yeah. kill mode all the way. Yeah, we gotta get on. Um, bastards. Every person in that series is in aggressive kill mode. Yes. Especially, well, not Actually, not, because... not Felicity Faircloth. Or Fair. But whatever. Felicity was, though. She, like, made that man suffer. Because she's the first one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I loved her. Okay. So she did, like... I don't she, really remember much about that book. Like, there was... The, I think it was that blowjob scene. <laughs> I don't know. She she made him suffer. And I was, like... Because I wasn't, like, the biggest fan of him. But she made that book for me. I was, like, you're a queen. You are so hot. Well, so. then everyone in that series is in mm-hmm. aggressive kill mode. Mm-hmm. But especially uh, Daring and the Duke. God, what a book. Well, Ewan's in aggressive kill mode just the entire <sighs> – every time you meet him, you're like, are you okay? And he's not. No. He was he's attempting not. to kill someone half he the time. He was not okay. Okay, so the one that I found was Never Seduce a Scott by Maya Banks. That sounds like – what one did you say was the red one? Uh, it was Never Love a Highlander. Okay, so the never was this – okay. Um. My own, I don't remember this book. Let me preface that. My review is only five stars because sword and blood. I don't. I have to. I assume don't. There was some aggressive kill oh, in there. I think she actually. I think she did kill, but I don't know the context. Yeah. I don't know anything about that. Yeah. But just know that it got shit done. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean that. That's all I got for you. But apparently, I had a great time. What so. more do you need, really? Frankly? Nothing. I mean, a sword and blood. So. <laughs> you know sometimes you just gotta do it you do yeah 
You do. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. What else? I feel like The Ray Kell of Roth by Amelie Howard. I'm um, just looking at some Amelie Howard ones. Yeah, I mean, I feel like a her, lot of her books. Mode. Queen Bee, that's aggressive yeah. kill mode the entire time. And I loved it every minute. Oh, so good. The Beast of Bezik, also low key. Oh my. But she is like her own brand of aggressive kill mode where mm-hmm. it's not like overtly she loses her mind. She just walks in and is like, I am here to offer to marry you. And then, like, yeah. it kind of ruins his life. She. Amelie is just a force to be reckoned with. Amelie is also an aggressive kill mode writer. Yeah. Yeah. And a super hot, like, sexy sex writer. None of you were prepared for uh, any so Duke sexy. in a storm. I wasn't prepared for a Duke in question. There was a line in that book that my jaw hit my chest. I was like, oh. <laughs> it wasn't even, like, oh. in the context of, like, erotica or like porn it wouldn't be crazy mm-hmm. but in the context of published like traditionally published romance i was like oh my god so you have that to look forward to and praise yeah. King, as she said as she told us she was she right. did she's like here it's for you <laughs> merry christmas and we said thank you and i said thank you yeah um yeah i definitely told her that she writes really good sex <laughs> i was like your books are so hot and she's like thank you <laughs> I'm like, they're so, like, I don't, it's not talked about enough. Like, they're so hot. So, you heard it here first. The right Cal of Roth, um, the heroine, like, punches another woman. I don't often condone that kind of violence. I remember that. But she, I, I do. I'm going to be honest. There's one scene in that book that blacked out every other scene in that book. And it involved the right Cal of Roth. A, a blindfold and some ties and a chair. You know, and that's speaking, the only thing I remember from it. Speaking of ties in a chair, um, I don't remember much of this, but the rebel and the rake. Yep. I think you're more, yep. yeah, yeah. That was an aggressive kill mode, edging. Like, well, also that vengeful. whole series deals with like spies. Yeah. So there's already aggressive kill mode there. That also was a lot of edging. She uh-huh. was like, "Now that you're tied to this chair, I might as well use this." And he was like, "Please do." <laughs> And then there's the Bethany Bennett, um, book two, the yellow one, where Sexual aggressive kill mode. Yeah, um, <laughs> she just sucks his dick until he's on the brink, and then she just walks out, and he is so alarmed and turned on. I mean, and so was I. Pissed at him. She was so. I mean, rightfully he was so. So mad at him. Rightfully so. It was. Oh god, it it was great. I think about that frequently. Just like the draw the jaw dropping moment of that one. That really did it. And I think that kind of happened in Wicked and the Wall. Oh, let me see. Oh my god, you know who else is in both sexual and just general lifestyle Ooh. aggressive kill mode at all times? <laughs> lifestyle aggressive kill mode is how, that's how I aspire to be. Um, Sounds like a magazine. <laughs> lifestyle aggressive kill mode. Oh, the uh, September edition featuring uh, Willa. Yeah. Oh, God. I can't remember their last name. Ransom. Oh, yeah. I forgot that his last name is Ransom. That is also hot. Oh, his wait. name is, is – well, Ethan Ransom. That's from Lisa Claypiss. Oh, no, no, no. Dom... Ransom is the guy. What is her name? Because the Ransom brothers are the other ones. Dom oh, Kilburn. Right. Kilburn, yeah. Is him. Yep. And then yep. Willa is a Ransom, it, right? It, it's Ransom, yeah, because it's okay. the Ransom Brothers. Because yeah. Ransom's also a first name, and I always get those confused. Mm-hmm, because Dom also had a sister, but she's Celeste. one. Yeah, so. There was there a lot are. going on there. Willa mm-hmm. lives her life in aggressive kill mode. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I, does Dom literally, but. Uh, <laughs> I... Uh, saw my friend maddie today and i told her because she she's read books one and two and she's like going to read that one i'm like dude read it she listens to this so maddie this is me telling you again read that book that is all there you have it there you have it and again like the the wicked and the wallflower scene i don't know if it was like revenge blowjob 
but still one of the best oral scenes I've ever, ever read. So do with that what you will. Uh, what else have we here? We've got, I mean, you talked about this one when we talked about before, The Perfect Crimes of Marion Hayes. Yep. Um, we're entering the, I'm just going to shoot someone category. Sure. Um, Because I have a few. Oh. Um, I yeah. I, I mean, you, well, you have one, obviously, we know. Um, <laughs> after this one. <laughs> so the first one in this great category that I love so much is um, she just really straight up murders someone at the beginning of that book. Yep. And I respect it so hard. Sometimes you just have to enter aggressive kill mode is the vibe. And she did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Deservedly so. Yeah. Yep. The next one, Lord of Scoundrels. Okay. That's what I thought you were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, nothing that's was... not even the most aggressive kill mode moment mm, in that book. No. No. Because the most she also tackling that man to the ground and repeatedly she... slamming his head into a door. <laughs> she also <laughs> did that. Jessica Trent. The God, woman that you are. The love of my life. The woman that you are. She's not dressing for revenge. She's dressing for aggressive kill mode. Mm. The funniest thing about her mm. shooting him is that that, even, that wasn't even technically her going into aggressive kill mode. No. Because she very specifically was aiming for his arm. She knew exactly. It was calculated. Kill mode in terms of, like, reputation, Ag- sure. <laughs> aggressively calculated kill mode. Yeah. I just think aggressively badass kill Like, I just... I, w- I wasn't prepared. I mean, that that's the whole statement I'm prepared to make. It's so true. I was not prepared. And then my one to round it out is um, A Season of Seduction by Jennifer Haymore. It is a Christmas one. So I read it last year, I think. And listen, it wasn't a book that I was like vibing with because he was there was a lot of lying and stuff. Like he was not a great guy for the first half. Um, but that was taken care of when she shot him. So honestly, respect. Um, because he was like trying to marry her for her money. I mean, he was doing it for, I guess, noble ish reasons. Um, but in her shoes, they were not noble. And so she like he like had her ruined like he scheduled her brother to come in when he was in the room with her um and so when she found that out she got a gun and literally shot him and he was like pretty close to dying um and he had a bunch of I need like to buy a gun <laughs> is that a quote yes okay i don't I know don't what know. it's from i only know it from tiktok cool i was like do you <laughs> no <laughs> it's like what it's the sound i need to buy a gun <laughs> i mean yes i am scared of loud noises so I, this is my living vicariously shelf um but yeah she just like shot him and was still angry at him for a lot of the book and he had to grovel and be like honestly you were right to shoot me um so getting any man to admit that you were right to do that is just a really baller move so <laughs> Again, not the best book, but I did give it four stars. One star was solely for that, you know? Like, it turned out to be a pretty good book, <laughs> like, once you got to the 50% mark. Um, so, yeah, I will probably read it again, because honestly, why not? Tis the season for aggressive kill mode. So. Tis the season for aggressive kill mode. Uh-huh. Um I would argue that every India Holton heroine is I was, within two I, aggressive kill mode. I didn't write any of the. I just wrote India Holton. Yeah. I think her heroine's more so. I think mm-hmm. Daniel Bixby is the one that comes the closest of the men. Yeah. Because I think Alex and Ned are just so mm-hmm. relaxed that it's hard yeah. for them to go full on aggressive kill mode. And then Charlotte, I'd say, would be the one... Who gets to feel all of her emotions at the end. Like she gets to kind of like let loose. And just kind of fuck everything up for a little bit. Um, Because her whole thing is like controlling. And like repressing. And all of that. Um, Suppressing. And um, yeah. Daniel he's got a tiger within. (laughs) 
boy does it roar aggressively so true god i love him and i guess another guy with a tiger within him <laughs> westcliff also daniel bigsby no sorry alice has to fight a literal tiger <laughs> she has sure to escape a tiger sorry yes who did you um, oh westcliff westcliff yeah aggressive kill mode is the defining <laughs> factor at the end of it happened one autumn Mm-hmm. And then once uh, Lillian is pregnant, he also goes into aggressive, find me the fucking doctor mode, or I will aggressively kill you um, mode. So, God, that fight between him and Sebastian was just hilarious. That single-handedly made the book for me. It's giving movie. <laughs> it's giving cinematography. Um... I've got another sexual aggressive kill mode, Ooh. and that is Shadow Heart by Laura Kinsale. Mm. Um, he is so dark and dangerous and assassin pirate mysterious, and she is so sheltered. And the minute they start banging, suddenly it gets real kinky, and she is so dominant, and he is so submissive. Nice. And she at one point, like, ties him to the wall... And is, As like, edging him. She, like, rakes her nails down his dick at one point. There was just a lot yes, happening. Queen. This is also the one that is all from her. Or not from her. It was, it's still mm. third person. Um, But all, all of the chapters are from her POV because he's so silent and secretive and mysterious. Ooh, and I then in wonder. that scene, yeah. like, 17 chapters in, uh, when she, like, ties him to the wall and is being very dominant, it suddenly switches to his POV, and I ate it up. That that reminds me of, um, what was the Sophie Jordan one? The Rake Gets Ravished. Um, the first, like, 60 pages are just from her POV um, because her brother has uh, gambled away basically all their money she's uh, worried about him doing other things so um she has to go and get back uh the deed to their house because he gambled that away as well and i mean she was lucky that he gambled it away to a super hot gambling den owner <laughs> like if if he's gonna gamble it away to someone he's gotta be viral sure. Sure. and he's and have <laughs> <laughs> and have washboard abs. So I mean, that's true. just, you know. Those are prerequisites. Exactly. And so she goes there in disguise. Um, she really is just trying to, you know, get him alone, kind of kiss him up a little bit and um, distract him so she can steal the deed. Well, it gets to a point where she's got two paths to take. Uh, Robert Frost would be <laughs> quaking. <laughs> one is to exit out of his bedroom door and just go home and have no house the other is to <laughs> go home and have no house <laughs> the other is to lose her virginity by acting like a an experienced woman sure on top this man was not prepared i wasn't prepared she, you know, it, it uses the, I read about sex in books, so I, I'm very skilled. I don't Literal care. Queen. It, it's a banger. It's a banger trope. Fight me. Um, And so she just really says fuck it and just rides that dick like crazy. <laughs> and he is so, like, because at, cause at first he's like, yeah, I'm not, like, you're not my type. You can leave. And then she's like, well, that was rude. Okay, I'll just go to a no house. And then she, like, turns around and has a whole little speech and he's like honestly okay (laughs) and um so yeah he doesn't know she's a virgin until like the next morning and she's gone she left a note she's like sorry i took it and then he's like what the fuck so she was a bad thief but great (laughs) ravisher um honestly (laughs) what we all aspire to be bad thief but great ravisher love my yelp review five stars (laughs) He was just so blown away because then he like saw the version split. He was like, "What the fuck happened?" If anybody last feels night? so inclined to leave us a five star <laughs> review, by the way, I would love for that to be the review that you leave. <laughs> Bad thieves, but great ravishers. Honestly, going on my LinkedIn, I gotta put it out there. <laughs> um, yeah. So the rest of the book is them like having like a no sex pack, basically. Um, 
Yeah, but the first, so, like, the first, like, chunk of that book, you're not in his POV. So you're just in hers, absolutely going to town on him. And it's wild. Um, Yeah, that, I was just not prepared. Because it was so hot. It was so hot. I No notes, really. Fair enough. It's a good cover, too. Uh, I have possibly my only non-historical romance uh, contribution to this. I can't guarantee it because who knows what's to come. (laughs) I don't know. No thoughts, just vibes. However, (laughs) Jude Duarte is perhaps... I know that's not a romance series. It's a YA fantasy Mm -hmm. series, but the romance is... It imprinted on me enough that mm-hmm. it lives in that section of my brain. Yeah. Um, and I think I read it, it for the romance. So yeah. I mean, I did I, too. But I, I agree that it's. I I never recommend it just for the. I have yeah. to be like it is political intrigue, mm-hmm. but also that was a, a great series. romance. I do think it's a fantasy series that appeals to romance readers as long as they know that the romance is the B plot and not mm-hmm. the main plot anyway Jude yeah. Duarte is the most she also lives her life in aggressive kill mode in the truest sense of the term oh gee. she is so scary and I love mm. her so much so does Carden as he should I was so confused in that first book I was like what is happening why am I into it I was also and then because then you you get the ropes happens. you know as it as it goes along yeah but wow and I mean fact- it starts off with like crazy murder yeah like <laughs> sure it, it sure does it, yeah i Drops mean you into that that scene nothing but aggressive kill mode she is in fact so aggressive kill mode the hospitality of knives um that in the the follow-up series the the stolen air the the second book isn't out yet but in the stolen air you don't see jude and Cardin, um but it's about oak who's like her little mm-hmm. half brother or not half brother but adopted brother basically uh and another she also let's be honest is in aggressive kill mode surin uh but not to the extent that jude is she's like feral jude is calculated and will like mess up your life yeah surin is feral and has little knife teeth and will bite you so (laughs) there's that anyway jude is so aggressive kill mode that even though Cardin is the king like, and he's the one that was mm-hmm. part of the Greenbrier line, and Jude is a human that married into it. Whenever other characters in this spinoff series talk about them, they'll be like, oh, Oak, like, your sister. Is, is she going to want to hear yeah. about what you're doing? Oh, the queen? Yeah, Cardin's also there. You know who we're concerned with, though? The queen is Jude. Cardin That's is we're her worried throne. about. Cardin yeah. is her throne. Cardin is just there for the vibes. Mm-hmm. I, he's like, I didn't even really want to be here. You can deal with my wife. Oh, she's Same. so aggressive kill mode, and I love her so much. <sighs> God, I love that woman and that series. Great. Great mm. vibes. Well, mm. the one, I guess, other non-contemporary. This one was coming up a lot at Steamy Lit. Um, it was Sweet Vengeance by Viano and Mm-hmm. Um, what a banger book. Um, on the author's website, there's a list of trigger warnings, so definitely check that out because it's rife with them. But basically, all the book is is that she summons a demon who he's a virgin, by the way, so that adds another level of aggressiveness from my my perspective. Um, so she summons a demon and she's basically like, I will, um, you know, sell my soul basically to um, murder this guy who abused me. And uh, they spend the entire book having sex. And when they're not having sex, um, stalking this guy and like popping up randomly because he can make her like invisible. So like she'll like pop up in front of his car and then he'll like make her invisible again. Um, And then like she's making this guy go insane. And then finally she just like murders him. And it, really was cathartic <laughs> it was you know that's the most aggressive kilmo book that i've read Fair enough. um where it's just straight up so good and it's so hot and i hope oh yeah it says right here sweet demons number one so there's gonna be more 
I'm prepared. I mean, I'm not, but I am. So, I mean, that one, it was wrecked a lot by different authors at Stimulate. Mm-hmm. And I agree. It should be. So, God, and the cover is good. Ugh. 10 out of 10. Well, there you have it. Oh, yeah. I am I'm scrolling. I haven't found any in a while. Um, that are like I've, true aggressive kill mode. Yeah. I've got the Marquis makes his move. Um, mm. She had her little aggressive kill mode moment when she got to just hurl China and plates at her terrible husband. Um, it's by Diana Quincy, if you don't classic. know. Um, yeah, it is, it is a classic. Um and she just really has no room for being nice and forgiving and just goes a little feral. And I adored her for it. I mean, it really do be like that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I, too, she went through a lot of shit. And I, too, would have gone feral. Um, Can't argue with that. Yeah. Another author who is just perpetually in aggressive kill mode is Lindsay Sands. Mm. um i haven't read a lot but her highlander ones the amount of concussions like she is in aggressive kill mode towards her characters like her main characters like she does everything in her ability to like get them at the brink of death um fair enough honestly she really loves pain and suffering and inflicting them on her poor characters um what what is this one i think this one's by her an english bride yeah an english bride in scotland the amount of like concussions on concussions on concussions on arrow wounds on stab wounds like everything under the sun like if there was a dinosaur she'd write it in there and have it stomp on him like she just goes so hard and you're at that at points you're just like, wow, how are like their heads, how are they not like squashed right now? Like jelly. How I don't are know. You alive. I asking that a lot, honestly, reading her books. The one more recent one that I read um was in this Highland Bride series. And it starts with the hero having an arrow wound, a fresh arrow wound. Um and then it starts with the heroine narrowly escaping, like, a rival clan, like, abusing her. And they, like, beat her up. And it was a whole thing. And I was like, whoa. Um, and so then he, like, tackles her because he thinks she's a little boy because she, like, flees out her window. And then she doesn't have any clothes on. And so then she steals his plaid when he's swimming. And then he's like, hey, little boy, that's bad. So then he chases her and then he tackles her. And then he's like, you're not a little boy. And then she's now got another head wound. And then so she <laughs> And so then he's You're like You're not a little boy. <laughs> and so then she pretends to have amnesia. My favorite trope. <laughs> You're not a little boy. Because she's so tiny. And he's like, What? And so then he's like, Well, I wouldn't have tackled you, but we're here now. And so then she pretends to have amnesia because she doesn't know if he is like affiliated with the clan that she just escaped. And so he's, like, the giantest cinnamon roll once he's not, like, tackling her. Sure. Um, <laughs> but, like, he has, like, split his wounds, like, 10 million times in that book. She is, like, battered beyond recognition for a lot of it. And a lot of head wounds because of him <laughs> on accident. There's just a lot happening. Um, and so, like, every Lindsay Sam book, especially her Highlander ones. I don't know about her other ones. But prepare to want to go get someone a Band-Aid. Wow. Not that it's going to do much, but I made it with my tears. Here you go. Um, that, yeah, she's she's in aggressive kill mode in that Highlander, Highland Bride series. So. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I've officially run out of books. I cannot think of any more. I will leave one final uh, aggressive Ooh. kill mode author. Not because the characters in her books are really in my experience i mean i've only read a few of her books so far the characters don't really do a ton of aggressive kill moding um but she is in aggressive kill mode on my emotional state at all times (laughs) and that is sherry thomas sherry Uh. thomas in almost every book of hers that i've read there's one that i dnf because i I, i'm gonna go back and try it again at some point but it did not Mm -hmm. work for me when i tried it uh but every other sherry thomas i have ever read 
just is like an assault on my emotional well-being for mm-hmm. three to four hundred pages. It's it's mm-hmm. kind of like what if I just made these characters go through so much emotional turmoil and just hurt you in every way that I could, and it is fantastic. Mm-hmm. But also, I'm in pain. <laughs> but I thank yeah. her for it. Yeah, I think we talked about private arrangements when we. I was just in constant pain. The first ravishing yeah. the heiress. Nothing has ever mm-hmm. hurt me for that sustained amount of time the way that that book did. Yeah. She was like, oh, you thought pining was like a cute – I'm going to make it hurt so bad. You are going to be in agony for this poor woman. Plot twist, I John would. Cougar Mellencamp wrote Hurt So Good about Sherry Thomas. I wouldn't <laughs> doubt it, frankly. Don't. It's actually a fact. <laughs> wikipedia it. you heard it here first just saying <laughs> yeah uh yeah i don't honestly i feel like this one kate bateman book um i feel like kate bateman is on the cusp of entering her aggressive kill mode era fair enough um she's just got some kooky fun plots but this one the princess and the rogue oh i want to read um, that. yeah all of her books are great i have not not enjoyed any of them um but this one so from the title she is a princess uh he is a rogue what um (laughs) i don't know spoiler alert i know i am terrible um and again like i love when the one character doesn't know that the other character is a virgin and then it's like some dramatic reveal and you're like they're like whoa oh my god i cannot believe it boy are you gonna love gentle rogue (laughs) I'm just kidding. It's not a dramatic reveal, but it's kind of a humorous one. Well, any kind of reveal is great. I read one. I just read it, but I'm forgetting it. Who knows? Not me. Um, But the quote quote from this one, uh, this is the hero, whatever his name was, uh, saying, speaking right now. Um, He said, Christ alive. I don't bed virgins ever. I bed wenches, actresses, widows, tarts. And then her eyes widened at that, but she lifted her chin in that haughty way he should have realized came from a lifetime of privilege. This is from her. Well, now you fucked a woman who outranks you. Congratulations. And then she just leaves. I mean, and has she it has stuck upon me like a little sea urchin or like some some weird thing on like a whale. Like I'm a little I'm a piece of like algae on a whale or on the whale that's the LG. Who knows? I don't know. Um, it just, it, it comes with me through the good days, the bad days, <laughs> the days I just want to sleep, the days when I'm running errands. I just think about her. And he was so shocked. And it was great. I mean, I would be so, too, frankly. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. And I think that, that really rounds it out. I agree. Mm-hmm. So, if you, listener, know of any books that have aggressive kill mode moments... Oh, wait, no. I lied. Oh, my God. Fucking Sky O'Malley. That book is aggressive kill mode all the way through. Y- yeah. I was aggressively killed. <laughs> yeah. No, but that one, that one's definitely an aggressive kill mode. I feel like they all kind of want to kill each other at multiple moments. I mean, yeah. Aggressively. Um... I lied. Uh, the Bachelor Bargain by Madison Michaels is my my last one. Um, the hero, he may actually be a villain. <laughs> like, you know, he's done a lot of things. And he goes into detail about the things that he's done. And frankly, it's alarming. But also, it turns you on. And so, like, you know... <laughs> There's not much more to say. Uh, that man, he's done some shit. I mean, so sometimes that's hot. I don't know. It it was charming, Mickey. I'm looking at you, charming Mickey. Charm the pants right off of me. But uh, no, the Mouse and Michaels one. I don't quite know what she was unleashing in that book, <laughs> but that hero was like the baddest kingpin i don't need like oh. some of these like historical romance heroes are like they're rakes they just kind of give like off like a fake like oh, blah, 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 blah. but he 
probably would have worn someone's skin as a suit oh, good if Lord. he needed to. <laughs> like, if he needed to really make someone suffer, <laughs> he would have went for it. The things he did to one man in particular. <laughs> at, and then he, like, the way that he had that man, like, then, like, indebted to it, you know? Read that book. Find out for yourself. It was crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I've i never really read, I mean, I guess in some of these bias strippers, but, like, most heroes, their, like, secret trauma or, like, their secret bad thing is that they, like, got into a bar fight or almost did something bad or, like, lost money or gambling or something. This man, active crimes. But, like, I endorse them. So. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's me. I I have nothing nutshell. more to add. No. I mean, there you have it. No. Your aggressive kill mode, extensive starter pack. <laughs> Not even just a starter pack. We've given mm-hmm. you more than enough. Mm-hmm. Your finishing pack smile a pack a day (laughs) that would be an impressive pack a day that would be a lot of books in a day yeah and a lot of like highly like adrenaline fueling like moments so yeah go forth and read about people in aggressive kill mode Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm mm-hmm it's such a good not into your own life Uh, no no You do whatever you want. Live! (laughs) Yeah, do that. Yep. That's all I got. Yeah, nothing else. Um, To recap, we've got the secret holiday that you should know. Talk like a pirate day. Um, It's not a secret if you tell them. (laughs) I know. Just kidding. It is, in fact, International Talk Like a Pirate Day. September 19th, every year. It's a great day. It's an Every day. year. <laughs> the way you said that was so right schmick coded. <laughs> you. I can't tell if Schmidt would love Talk Like a Pirate Day. Actually, no. Jessica no. Day would love Talk Like a Pirate yeah. Day. Schmidt would, would fucking hate, hate it. hate it. He would hate it so much. Mm-hmm. He would, however, do some weird pirate role play. Yeah, he would. Yeah, he would. He would take advantage of that. At any rate, it's Talk Like a Pirate Day coming up on Tuesday, which means, boy, will we be coming at you with some pirate romance discussions. Mm -hmm. I also have a book where the guy has an eye patch, and I don't even know if he's a pirate. I kind of want to read it. I mean, that's like as much of a pirate as you can be. Is it uh, one-eyed dukes are? No, but that's another one. Thank you for adding that to my list. That's Megan Frampton. This one... It's an older. I don't remember the, the rest of the title. One Eyed Dukes are wild or something. Yeah, I, there's which is there's an insane Minerva. title, by the way. <laughs> that is an insane thing to name a book. One Eyed Dukes she are was... wild, <laughs> and that man is on the cover with an eye patch. Who allowed that title? My hero. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. There's a Minerva Spencer, I think, that also has a guy with an eye patch. But there's this one, they're on like a body of water, and it's a really cool cover, and he has an eye patch. I saw it when I was like reorganizing my shelves, so if I find it. Um, but yeah, I'll I be reading Gentle Road. Pirate and pirate adjacent romances. Mm-hmm. I kind of read one today. He was like pirate adjacent. I love um, a pirate adjacent romance. Mm hmm. Gentle Rogue. I thought it was a pirate romance. Yeah. Really, it's pirate. Well, retired pirate, pirate adjacent. He's not. He doesn't do any pirating. But but they was, are on a boat for part of it. Yeah, and he was imprisoned for former pirating. Well, he was locked in their cellar. I wouldn't go so far as to say imprisoned. <laughs> imprisoned in their cellar. Okay. <laughs> imprisoned in the wardrobe. <laughs> Set fire to the wardrobe. Loved. <sighs> Yeah, so that's happening on the 19th. And then The Rake God, by so Mary... Excited. I know. The Rake by Mary Jo Putney is on that Friday, whatever day that is. So, lots of things coming at you. Second, I think. 
Yeah. Yep. Lots of things coming yep. at you. And you. Yeah. So nothing else really. Um, read some pirate romance so you can be like you're part of that ride. Or read the rake. I have no clue. I've never. I don't really hear people talk about that one. So yeah, I don't know anything. about It's a little it. bit later in the '90s, so I'm mm. a little, little cautious, a little optimistic. <laughs> I I just can't be like I need to be a little bit cautious, or else I'll get hurt again. So <laughs> you get some armor. Uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, that that's our aggressive kill mode. Yeah. Get your eye patches and peg legs ready. <laughs> Strap in for some true aggressive gale mode. <laughs> Pirate romances coming at you. In just a few um, days by the time this it goes It really out. is just a few days. Too few of days, if I'm being honest. I feel like I want to read a lot, and that's not that many days. So you just do your best. Guys, there's a, I don't think I'll have it read in time because I have a bunch of other ones that have audiobooks mm-hmm. and I'm going to prioritize those and this one doesn't have it. But I did find a Teresa Medeiros pirate romance. Oh, did you? Where it's one of the – because it's older and so it's like got kind of a vague description and I didn't look any further into mm. it. Um, But it basically was – it seems like she was kidnapped by a pirate and he didn't do anything to her and then let go and then – at some point, she get, I don't remember if he's, like, a bodyguard or something, but she comes back and she's, like, attracted to him. She doesn't know what's going on. Whatever. The pirate's name is apparently Captain Doom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her so, books really don't have audiobooks, which is a shame. Captain Doom. I'm going to see if I can find it because I can't remember what the name of it was. It's one of those ones that has, like, kind of a beachy-looking cover. But it's not a whisper of roses. It's Thief of Hearts. Thief oh, this one has way more of a description. Hang on. Is it? Yeah, from from the storm-lashed decks of a pirate schooner to the elegant grounds of an English estate comes a spellbinding tale of love and deception. Um, ba-dum, ba-dum. As the only remark... No. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, an innocent beauty, prim and pampered, Lucinda Snow, knew little of men and nothing of danger until the fog-shrouded night she found herself abducted and at the mercy of the legendary Captain Doom. Ruthless, uh, ruthless and mocking, tender and virile, the notorious pirate awakened all Lucy's passionate longings, then abandoned her with nothing but a kiss. Now safely at home, the alluring waif is tormented by treacherous memories, and by the presence of J- Gerard Claremont, her mysterious new bodyguard. Everything about him, from his forbidding size to his impertinent manner, sparks her defiance, and even when Gerard's smile turns seductive, no one can make her forget doom. <laughs> Yet only when Lucy's path crosses the captain's once more will she learn who is on a voyage of retribution and who is out to steal her heart. Bro. (laughs) That plays into one of my favorite tropes, which is a subset of the mistaken or hidden identity trope, which is a subset. (laughs) The person, so one's disguising their identity. And the other person that doesn't know um, doesn't think that they can be together because of the status uh, or like the identi- like the fake identity. But little like little do they know that we know that this person is actually the perfect person for them. Like they're perfectly suited because it's a fake identity and the real identity is perfect. And so like that's my favorite. I put it in a review. It's my uh, dramatic irony um, because like nothing is better. Then two characters, this happened in the uh, Kathy Maxwell that I just read. Nothing is better than them thinking that they cannot be together because they were both hiding their identities. So like they were so upset and gutted. And then it's kind of just like, oh. And then other things happened. But like, I love that so much. It happens in Love Letters from a Duke by Elizabeth Boyle. She wants a Duke so badly. And then her footman is really hot. And she's like, really? Like, how do I, like, how have I failed myself being attracted to him when I need a Duke? <gasps> he's actually he's actually a duke guys of course. don't worry of so it's, it's so good um so thief of hearts that <laughs> compels me i mean it does the I, right from the get-go captain mm. doom really got me i don't know if mm. i'll have time to read that one because again i have several others but 
Honestly, I may take. I may do that. I think I kind of. I'm missing my library has it because honestly, Teresa Madero's. I have, the, laps, I have it on Libby, so it may be on. I don't know which library card, cool. but it's worth checking. Um, she wrote the uh after midnight and the vampire mm-hmm. who loved me, and she also wrote a kiss to remember. Um, and then uh, Danny from Overflowing Shelves, she wrote a western that's um pre two thousand, so we should we need to read that for next season. Um, because she said it was a really great historical western, love. Um, which scared me a little bit. So like, if I've got an endorsement, I am way more willing. Um, let me see what it was called. She just did a step back review for it. Uh, Nobody's Darling by Teresa Medeiros. Um, I want to read that really bad. So stay tuned if we end up experiencing Captain Doom. Captain Doom. That. Mocking, tender, and virile. <laughs> mm. Alluring waif. Alluring waif. That's going in my bio if I had room. <laughs> Alluring <laughs> waif. Tormented I by do... treacherous. I, I, the more campy yeah. a book description sounds, uh, yeah. like a historical romance description sounds, the more I'm like, yeah. Honestly, well, sign me up. That's why I started reading. That's why, I, like, I got a bunch of them from the thrift store before I even read them because I was reading the summaries and I was like, these sound like a really good time. And they are. And they are. And they are. What was it? Nothing hits, like... Mocking, tender, and virile. M- mocking, what a tender, combination. and virile men. <laughs> and they're alluring waifs. <laughs> Captain Doom. Captain Doom. Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow. Okay. Mm. Yes. You guys underestimate, I feel like, my love. I, I No one's ever, like, told me to my face, but I feel like you guys underestimate uh, my sheer love of Talk Like a Pirate Day. I feel like that that's probably accurate. I feel like I did. I don't it's anymore. just so fun. There, yeah, because you, know you we'll said about it in I was night. gonna say because there's a you can like get free things on top. Of yeah, that. they used to do more. It's fewer yeah. and fewer places have been doing it, so now it's only like I don't know, like Long John Silver's and something. But the war against Talk Like a Pirate. The day, war guys. against Talk Like a Pirate Day. What is going on? Chris get your Cream swords. Used to go uh, give out like a dozen donuts if you showed up dressed as a pirate. What if you just do and scare them into giving you donuts? <laughs> so I was talking to Estelle today and we uh-huh. were talking because she was like, oh, talk like a pirate day is coming up because I mentioned Gentle Rogue. And I was like, uh-huh. thank you for remembering. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, and we were talking about like Forever only has a few pirate books and she mm-hmm. wishes they had more. As she, and she talked about working for I don't remember who, but a different publisher and they had a book. I can't remember. I think maybe it was like a children's book or something called The Pizza Pirate. And we ended up, like, spitballing back and forth, and accidentally I came up with a genius idea for a romance, and it's a time travel romance where she works at a pizza place called Pizza Pirate and ends up somehow getting, like, Outlander style sucked back Uh in time, but because of her uniform, they think she's a pirate. And then romance (laughs) ensues. That's it. That's as far as I got. But the way that I would read the Pizza Pirate so quick, like, guys... (laughs) This is going to be my debut romance novel because he's got pepperoni and an eye patch and a big dick. He's, he's got, got the, the sausage. sausage. <laughs> can he be Italian so it can be Italian sausage? Mamma mia. <laughs> he says that. When, never mind. Um, <laughs> um, oh, God. Well, oh, the Italian sausage. If you if you listen to our pirate episode, we'll count each listen as a vote for Caroline to write that book. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> wait. Um, that's look out for my debut romance, The Pizza Pirate. <laughs> that's so much fun. Uh, meat lovers special. <gasps> wow, <laughs> it's so suited. 
It just writes itself, basically. <laughs> it really does. I... Oh, okay. We are over time. Not that we've mm-hmm. ever had a time limit that we've actually used ever. Uh, you know. What is time when I mean, there are pirates we, and pizza? And we Italian really treated sausage. them with that little preview of the yeah. pizza pirate for Tuesday's episode. We really did. You're welcome. You're so welcome. Also, you are welcome <laughs> for my creative genius. <sighs> I'm in awe. As you sitting be. here, as you should be, up to my titties and alligators, <laughs> and that's a mic drop. Boom. Thank <laughs> you.